Welcome to section 10 of immunology. In this section, we'll be discussing positive and negative selection. Let's get started. In this diagram, we have a complete overview of T cell differentiation and maturation. Before we dive too deep into the diagram, let's talk about some general ideas. As you can see, T cells originate in the bone marrow, but then migrate and mature in the thymus. Eventually, they migrate to the lymph nodes where they can become even more differentiated. From here, depending on the cell type, a host of cytokines are secreted, and each of these have a unique function. Also notice that we have a legend for T cell receptors, as well as CD8 and CD4 proteins. If we look back at the bone marrow, notice that the T cell precursor doesn't have a T cell receptor, CD4, or CD8 on its surface yet. So it's just a naked cell. It acquires these in the thymus just before it goes through positive and negative selection. Let's discuss these ideas in a bit more detail. Let's start with positive selection. Positive selection occurs in the thymic cortex. And the main idea of positive selection is to allow only the T cells that combine to self-MHC to survive. So it selects for T cells that bind to self-MHC. This hopefully makes intuitive sense because recall that T cells must bind to our own cells in order to function properly. They bind to antigen-presenting cells and other normal cells to mount an immune response. So you could imagine that if a T cell was unable to recognize self-MHC molecules, then it would be a completely ineffective immune cell. I like to think of this process as helping the T cells focus. In other words, positive selection is all about helping T cells focus on only those antigens that are presented by MHC. Anyway, the thymic epithelial cells that are present in the thymus express these self-MHC molecules, which then interact with the developing T cells. If T cells cannot adequately bind to these MHC molecules, then they undergo apoptosis. So if they're unable to adequately bind, they undergo apoptosis. Those T cells that are able to successfully bind to self-MHC will go on to the next step of T cell development, which is termed negative selection, and this occurs in the thymic medulla. Finally, it's important to remember that after positive selection, the T cells will express either CD4 or CD8, but not both. Here is an overview image of positive and negative selection to help illustrate these ideas. Let's discuss positive selection first. At the top, we can see two T cell precursor cells. Notice that at the beginning of positive selection, they have their T cell receptor, or TCR. They also have CD4 and CD8 on the surface. The T cell acquires each of these shortly after arriving at the thymus. As we just discussed, the whole purpose of positive selection is to select for T cells that recognize self-MHC. This is achieved by exposing these T cell precursors to self-MHC molecules on thymic epithelial cells. So we can see a thymic epithelial cell right here. And notice that it has MHC1 and MHC2 on its surface with a sampling of peptides and that this binds to the T cell receptor. T cells that fail to bind to these will undergo apoptosis. On the other hand, T cells that can bind to MHC are kept alive. Finally, notice that just after positive selection, the cell stops displaying either CD4 or CD8, so it's no longer considered a double positive T cell. So, for example, down here, we can see that the cells only have CD4 or CD8, not both. The exact process of how this occurs is still unknown. Negative selection occurs in the thymic medulla. It's the opposite of positive selection in that positive selection selects for T cells that can bind to MHC, while negative selection selects against T cells that bind too tightly to self-antigens. In other words, negative selection is important in eliminating T cells that would recognize our own antigens and end up mounting an immune response against our own cells. So negative selection helps prevent autoimmune disorders. T cells that bind too tightly will undergo apoptosis or become T regulatory cells. And we'll talk about this later in the video. If we look at negative selection, you can see that an antigen presenting cell, or APC, presents a self antigen to a CD4 cell using MHC2 and a CD8 positive T cell using MHC1. If either a CD4 or a CD8 positive T cell receptor binds to the self antigen, then it will undergo apoptosis. So on the right side, we can see that the cells are binding to the antigens, and these cells undergo apoptosis. However, if neither the CD4 or CD8 positive T cell receptors bind, so fails to bind, 
then the T cell is allowed to further mature. Now, you may be wondering how MHC2 presents self-antigen to CD4 cells. After all, only MHC1 should be able to present self-antigen, right? Recall that MHC2 normally presents foreign antigens. So how could it present a self-antigen? Well, it turns out that the specialized cells in the thymic medulla break the rules here and are actually capable of presenting self-antigens on MHC2. This is how CD4-positive T cells are able to undergo negative selection. And as we just learned, if they recognize self-antigens, they're destroyed. So in summary, negative selection is all about removing those T cells which recognize self-antigens and would cause autoimmune disorders if they were allowed to survive. An important association to make with negative selection is the AIRE gene. This is also known as the autoimmune regulator gene and it's responsible for the expression of self-antigens on antigen-presenting cells within the thymus. If this gene is mutated, the negative selection is impaired, and the patient ends up with an abundance of self-destructive T-cells that cause autoimmune diseases, so it results in autoimmune endocrine diseases. One condition is known as autoimmune polyendocrinopathy candidiasis ectodermal dystrophy, or APECED. This is characterized by recurrent candida infections, hypoparathyroidism, and adrenal failure. The exact presentation isn't as important as recognizing that an AIR gene mutation results in impaired negative selection, which then causes autoimmune problems. Okay, so now we have discussed the bone marrow and the thymus. At this point, the T cells are mature, but still naive. They are either CD4 positive or CD8 positive, but not both. From the image, if you look at the legend, you can see that the CD8 positive cells are cytotoxic T cells, and the CD4 positive cells are helper T cells. However, before these cells can perform their functions, they must be activated. And we can see T cell activation in the diagram right here. T cell activation is discussed in more detail in the next lecture. All right, now that we've covered positive and negative selection, let's review with a question. A 37-year-old woman with a history of rheumatoid arthritis presents to her physician for follow-up care. She has several questions about how autoimmune disorders develop in relation to T-cell development. The physician informs her that her T-cells likely recognize self-antigens due to derangement of which T-cell developmental process. All right, we're told that this patient has rheumatoid arthritis due to T-cells that likely recognize self-antigens. Recall that these T-cells are normally destroyed during negative selection. So derangement of negative selection is the correct answer. In other words, if negative selection is messed up, patients can end up with autoimmune disorders because T-cells will mount an immune response against self-antigens. Okay, that should be everything you need to know about positive and negative selection.